Brexit talks between the UK and the EU have stalled. Negotiators are frustrated. Usually you can't see in Michel Barnier's face if he's angry and usually his tone is quite normal however disappointed or displeased he is. But when Barnier reported about the last round of negotiations, his tone and what he said was not very diplomatic. He emphasized that it is his job to tell the truth and the negotiations have not brought any significant progress. Four rounds of negotiations have ended quite unsuccessfully since March and Barnier is accusing the Britons of a blockade. And this time even more he attacks Boris Johnson directly. Because Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, personally negotiated the political declaration with the EU, which at least the EU is now trying to cast into a legally binding agreement. But now, according to Barnier, Boris Johnson is trying to collect one promise after another. And yes, of course, I emphasize this again, the political declaration itself is not binding. But Boris Johnson, just like his counterparts in the EU, signed that political declaration as their will for a future relationship. The political declaration was made to show what both sides want in the future relationship and Boris Johnson now doesn't want to know anything about it. And how trustworthy is someone who signs something, says it's his will for the future and then suddenly says, oh, I don't care about what I signed. And one example Barnier mentions from this political declaration is the level playing field. In this political declaration, the British government has stated that they want to maintain standards like they are now. And that goes for environmental protection, labor laws, social standards, and they would keep them as they are, first of all, right now. And they decide that they want to keep that level extremely close to the EU. And now they don't want to know anything about it anymore, complains Barnier. And the same goes, according to Barnier, in the field of the civil use of nuclear energy and the fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. At a video press conference, Barnier said this political declaration is available in many languages, including English, and that it is not difficult to read. And I have to agree, even if I usually read it in English and not in German, it is easy to read. And many fields Brexiteers complain now about that the EU suddenly came up with them are covered in this political declaration. So everybody who plays surprised has never read that thing. You can say again and again, it's not legally binding. Yeah, correct, it's not. But no one can say that all these points, including fishing, by the way, have suddenly been brought up by the EU because they were all part of this political declaration. There are no new surprises brought up by the EU. And Barnier also does admit not everything from this political agreement, of course, has to be put into a legally binding agreement. Yeah, because the issue of fishing, for example, is clear as the highlight of these negotiations. And of course, you can negotiate the single parts, but you can't just say, well, I signed this, but I don't care about any of this anymore. And especially in case of fishing. Economically, that doesn't play a role at all. It is more and more a symbolic part of these negotiations and the symbolic value of this is much greater than the economic one. And that leads to one point what Barnier said, the EU wants to maintain the status quo in the cooperation with the UK, but the UK really wants to change everything. Also everything that is in this political declaration. And in a case like this, you would try to approach each other, but according to Barnier, the British don't really have a will to do anything like this. For example, London demands that the quotas for fishing are renegotiated every year. And that's technically not possible for the EU because of the structure of the EU. And yes, you can blame the EU for that, but the EU is made up of 27 countries who have to agree every time they renegotiate something. It has to be ratified again in 27 countries if you renegotiate something. And so this is not very time efficient to renegotiate every year. Because you have to remember there are hundreds of species in British waters and you can't negotiate hundreds of species from scratch every year. At the same time, there are rumors that the British are willing to move in that area. So was that all just a theater thunder? What is clear is that there was just a standstill in the negotiations since March. The next step now has to be a meeting of the EU leaders with Boris Johnson. Whether 
EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and EU Council President Charles Michel will meet Boris Johnson in person or via video conference is not clear yet and also the date is not clear yet. It is quite possible that the EU side will wait until after the EU Council video summit on June 19th and only after that when they coordinated with all 27 partners will meet up with Boris Johnson. And when that happens it will be the last chance to see if there's any chance to proceed with these negotiations. And that's not me saying that, it's Bernd Lange from the Social Democrats in Germany. He's the head of the Trade Committee of the European Parliament. The hope is clear. There is the hope that the meeting of the politicians will bring the momentum that all the negotiations before have lacked. In London, however, attempts are being made to dampen expectations. According to British government circles, the high-level meeting should not be over-dramatized. And according to them, all they would do is to check the status, where are the negotiations at the moment. The crucial question for the meeting seems to have been answered long ago. Because the crucial question always was, is the transition period going to be extended, which ends on December 31st. And this decision must be made by the end of June. But why does Boris Johnson always reject the extension? First of all, everybody would think now the Brexit negotiations are not on the top of the priority list on both sides, neither the EU nor the UK because of the corona crisis. But Johnson and his Brexiteers see it differently. And so Boris Johnson and his chief negotiator David Frost have rejected an extension repeatedly. And so in Brussels many suspect that Boris Johnson now just wants to hide the economical damage of the Brexit with a hard Brexit at the end of the year without any trade agreement just behind the damages that will be caused by the corona crisis which will, will be even worse than the Brexit damage. But in that case, according to Brussels, the blame would have to be on London. So if this really happens, I'm quite curious who many commentators under my videos who are definitely on the pro-Brexit side are going to blame for the damages happening from 1st of January 2021. The legal experts in Brussels, for example, find that the EU can't be blamed for lacking of flexibility in these negotiations. Because there is no longer the right for the British to benefit from the provisions of a big number of trade agreements between the EU and other third countries. The UK has left these trade agreements with Brexit. And it's clear, what is in the interest of one EU country can be totally different in another EU country. The Brussels legal assessment I quoted counters the criticism of the British side that the EU wants to deprive the British of the advantages that Canada have given them in the trade agreement. And because there is always hope in, in British media that the EU will buckle in the end. But they really are getting fed up with all of this. At their plenary session in June, the EU Parliament wants to adopt a harsh resolution where they do support Barnier and the work he did so far. That doesn't sound like buckling, that sounds like getting fed up with what's happening. And Bernd Lange, I quoted before, the trade expert of the European Parliament, is now quite sure that it's possible that any kind of a small deal that's still possible between the UK and the EU until the end of this year will not make too a big difference to a hard Brexit. Uh, and by the way, the EU doesn't have any trade deal with the USA, where we do a lot of trade with them, but with tariffs and quotas. Although David McAllister, a member of the Brexit Coordination Group of the Parliament, at the same time believes that the effect of a no deal at all, except withdrawal agreement, put that aside, that's only mostly important for the Northern Ireland situation, he believes that there still is more damage with a no deal than with any small deal. However, he still believes there is no real leadership on the British side at the moment. And Boris Johnson has to make clear now, if he wants a deal at all, because it doesn't look like it. Of course, I've seen all the paperwork, all the framework of the British side for a number of agreements, not just a trade agreement. Everybody who's always talking about a trade agreement, have a look yourself. It's a ton of agreements they want and they have to replace a ton of agreements with other countries and other areas they had as an EU member which are not there anymore from 31st of December. And the Greens in the European Parliament already say 
the EU must accept now that the British don't want a deal at all. And that it's now time for Barnier to show that Brexit means tariffs, quotas and on our side the protection of the European standards. And Barnier and David Frost seem to have come to the conclusion that they have to come up with something now or never. Because even David Frost says we are almost at the limit what we can do in formal negotiations in this period of time. And that's the point where Barnier said we can't go on like this forever. I also believe we can't go on like this forever. If we don't see progress soon, it's better just to end these negotiations for now, concentrate on Corona from the European side. There's a lot we have to do. And the summit I was talking about from the 19th of June has to deal with the eight packages for some countries in the EU in case of the Corona crisis. Brexit is not the top priority in this summit either. And it can't be and it mustn't be. We have much more important things to deal with. But Barnier is quite an optimistic guy. He has one last hope I got is that if they can meet up in person again someday, if it's early enough, that might give a boost to the negotiations compared to the video conferences. And if you now want to know more about European politics from a German point of view, I put my next video in the end screen. Click and enjoy. I'll see you there. Viel Spaß.